Hi, this is Shadi. Before you start commenting steroids in my comment section, please listen to me. I have something very important to tell you. Anyone who's lifted at the gym or followed any little bit of bodybuilding, you would know that doping is something very natural and it's very common. Uh, also, at the same time, we should know that size and strength aren't everything when it comes to the evolution of sports, particularly grappling. Masahiko Kimura, here you see him in great shape, still nothing compared to the physiques of today. So whether it is Carlos Gracie with his endless hours of training, yet this is what he looked like back in the day at the at middle age, we need to understand that size and strength aren't everything. And when it comes to the evolution of grappling, it isn't the main driving factor. In fact, there is something that's, I wouldn't say even hidden, it's the elephant in the room. And this is what exactly I'm going to talk about today when it comes to the evolution of the physiques and doping. So smaller grapplers have always beaten bigger and stronger grapplers. That's not a surprise. In fact, this is what grappling is for. So let's go back in time and see what we can learn from it. So here, this is Yoshitsugu Yamashita, one of the four guardians of the Kodokan back in the 1800s with his cauliflower ears, but you can see his physique. This is just someone who is very fit, someone who works out at best. So if you put a shirt on him, he's not very impressive, but at the same time, the amount of fights that he's been in, the brawls, he's even been to jail. So you can say that this is a very fierce and tough fighter, and yet he looked very average. So this is when it comes to Yoshitsugu Yamashita. Now let's go a little bit further in time with the evolution of exercise science and look at the man known as Mitsuyo Maeda. Very good shape, put a medium shirt on him. He looks like a guy who's fit and works out very compact, yet he was short. So it's not very difficult to put muscle on a very small frame. But again, compared to the physiques of today, this is absolutely nothing. This is just a guy who trains and has developed some type of muscle mass from all the grappling that he's done. Now, what can we actually learn from the past when it comes to, you know, being a very good fighter? And for me in particular, it's this fight, Valdemar Santana versus Elio Gracie. Elio Gracie was 42 years old. Valdemar Santana was 26. The age difference alone should be a very important factor. Santana was a very well-built fighter. He was far more muscular than Elio Gracie, and yet the fight lasted for three and a half hours. 42 years old, fighting for three and a half hours, and the fight only ended because of a soccer kick. So it was ground and pound, followed by a soccer kick, which is illegal today. So God knows how long that fight would have lasted today. Again, 42 years old against a 26-year-old, three and a half hours. By today's standards, this is still considered monumental and legendary. So what can we learn from this? So Elio Gracie was a swimmer and a rower, and he did randori. So I think the most important element that we're forgetting is endurance. Endurance, in my opinion, is the best thing you can have in your arsenal as a grappler. Endurance so you can last long and also the hours of training. It doesn't matter if the fight lasts three minutes or five minutes on the day of the competition. What matters is the hours piled in training that led up to that competition. So that's one thing we're missing uh, when it comes to you know, doping or steroid use is the endurance. Um, you can take, there are many steroids out there and you can take some that actually cannot put a pound on your frame, but can give you endless endurance. And that's one thing a lot of people are missing. One example, Lance Armstrong, Tour de France, a great cyclist, yet turns out he was doping and he denied it uh, in the media. Um, Hoist Gracie, Turned out he was doping later and he looked very average. In fact, he didn't look like he lifted that much. So I think what we can learn is that endurance is key when it comes to grappling and not size and strength. In fact, a lot of size can be harmful in the long run because imagine having all this you know, muscle mass on your frame like Galvao or uh, Gordon Ryan or Palharis. 
all this muscle that you're carrying when you're fighting they need oxygen too it's not just so you can breathe all these muscles they need uh, oxygen as well and uh, in the long run that's not good so in fact it's you know when you're smaller with far better cardio or in muscular endurance is better in the long run than a bigger grappler so when we talk about the evolution of physics the, the evolution of jiu-jitsu a lot of guys are saying they're just too strong they're doping and look at their physiques when they're talking only about size and strength but we're missing the main factor and that is endurance you know steroids not only allow you to recover faster but they will give you great endurance one um, compound that comes to mind is primobolin primobolin ask any bodybuilder how uh, expensive it is ask any bodybuilder how very little muscle mass it can give you so a lot of them say it's not worth it but they miss out on the endurance bodybuilders don't care about endurance but if you look at one of its benefits it's endurance so but it it very it puts very little muscle on you so that's the key thing that we're missing out is with the evolution of the physiques the endurance is still a, a key factor again a 42 year old man going three and a half hours if you can work your endurance doping or not this is what will make you a better grappler in my opinion competitively speaking because you can put the hours of work on the mats and with the hours of works on the mats not only will your cardio get better but also your your technique will get better and this is what you need you need longer endurance and better cardio so let's take a look uh, at the latest Pena versus Ryan it lasted 40 minutes and Pena just uh gave up and said he doesn't want to continue anymore before any submission and one thing that's really smart about gordon ryan is he's always on top he's taller than everyone and he just spreads out his weight and that's what allows him to actually go um longer ask any guard player how taxing it is not only the length of the fight but also having someone on top of you trying to constantly uh, pass and laying their weight on you so Gordon Ryan is taking advantage of his height greatly so when it comes to doping in grappling in general it's the endurance that's very beneficial and not so much the size and strength again uh, Campo recently defeated Garcia and she's a much bigger woman than her so it's all what matters is the endurance and steroids can give you that it's not necessarily the size and strength are they important in the equation of course but are they the key no they're not uh jocko willing talks about how he got mauled by smaller guys with better you know performance and better muscular endurance than him so when it comes to the evolution of physics in short it's actually the evolution of endurance and that's what we should look for when it comes to grapplers being in great shape and having tons of endurance and we can endure round after round in training because that will result in better grappling and better technique and you can last longer than your opponent again having too much muscle is very taxing on your oxygen tank and that's what you do not want as a grappler so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening